Good morning and welcome to my morning rant. This is a good one for those who are Christians and not so good one for those that are harassing the body of Christ or those that are called the sons of God. They ought to be very careful how they treat us. Um, you guys that are following me know that we've seen the thread of the Father being a protect and being a shield to us uh, from all of those that are, of course, the enemies, um, Lucifer and all of his demons and cohorts and leadership in his kingdom. We know that the Bible talks about weapons of our warfare are not carny, carnal, but they're mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. It tells us about principalities and powers and wickedness in high places and all those things. The area tells us about dominion and having dominion over or principality and so forth. So we know that uh, God has given to us all this thing, all these uh, weapons and abilities. But there's a story in the book of Luke about a praying woman. And I want to let you guys know that our father is a judge. As much as he is loving, he is a judge and he believes in justice. And many of you today are feel that you're not getting your justice for how someone is treating you, be at work, in your family. But I'm here to encourage you and tell you that God is keeping note. All you need to do is just keep praying. The Bible says we ought to pray for them, pray for those that um, persecute you. And we pray that, uh, you know, God, I usually turn those people over to God. Isaiah tells us that we can either call judgment upon them or that uh, it is the heritage of the saints, the Bible tells us, or we can turn it over to God. And usually, if they're a non-believer, I'll handle it. You know, we want to handle a couple of things our own self, you know. But if it's a Christian, turn it over to God because I'll say to him, this is your child or someone claiming to be your child. And um, I'm turning them over to you that you would judge them and be the, um, that one of justice. But I've learned, I'm learning how to handle it because God knows how to, um, he knows all of their weaknesses, including those that are non-Christians. So uh, we have to learn how to, I had to learn how to back off and not to get angry, but to um, let God handle it. And those that are acting bad towards us. The scripture says that the love that the love that we show them is twofold. We're showing them love, but it's also heaping judgment upon their heads. So um, God is keeping a, uh, a track of all of this stuff. I'll show you Isaiah 32 verse 22 says, "For the Lord is our judge; the Lord is our lawyer, our lawgiver." The Lord is our King. He will save us. But it is God who executed judgment, putting down one and lifting up another. That is Psalms 75, 7. I'm telling you guys, there is a day. And it tells us in Acts 17, 31, because he has fixed a day on which he will judge the world in righteousness, but a man whom he has appointed, and of this he has given assurance to all by raising him from the dead. And we know that this God is a God of justice. And I want to take you to a story and uh, to remind you to stay praying. Because this God that I'm talking about is listening to your prayers. And um, as a result of it, it tells us that he uh, will uh, take care of it for you. He's tell us over and over that we ought to judge not, uh, that we may not be judged in, uh, in Matthew 7, uh, 1. So that is not our responsibility to judge. Let, let it be to God. And he is the one that is watching all of this stuff. The righteous judge and a God who feels indignation every day. He's on top of the situation that uh, um, he is watching. And there's a scripture in Luke 18:8. It says, "And he shall not, and shall not God avenge his own elect? Cry day and night unto him, though he bears long with them." I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. And now let's go back, take a look at this whole chapter, see what this is about, so that you will be encouraged that God is listening. This is Luke chapter 18. And he spake a parable unto them uh, to this end, that men ought always to pray, not to faint. So we see that the qualification, this particular thing 
uh, the Bible says is that we ought to be praying. And it tells us men ought to uh, pray and not faint, Luke 18, 1. And there's all the uh, other scriptures tells us that um, we ought to be praying all pray without ceasing and so forth. Why? Because it says, he has inclined his ears to me, therefore I shall call upon him long as I live in Psalms 116.2. So we see that the qualification of this act that God will do is based upon praying. Saying there is a city, uh, there was in a city a judge which feared not God, neither regard him. And there was a widow in that city, and she came unto him, saying, Avenge me of mine adversary. And he would not for a while. But afterwards he said within himself, Though I fear not God, nor regard man, Yet, because this widow troubled me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming to me she wearies me. The Lord said, Hear what the unjust judge says, And shall not God avenge his own elect, which cry day and night unto him? Who he, though he bear uh, long with them, I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, he shall find uh, shall he find faith on the earth? And that's a disturbing statement to me um, that Jesus made. He said, shall I find uh, faith on the earth? And I'm going to talk about that coming this Sunday about shall I find faith uh, on the earth? Because uh, there's some statistics that are out there that I've been reading recently that I can basically see exactly why he said that. But today I just want to talk to you guys that God is a judge um, based on the praying of the result. That's the qualification by which he is now going to judge. And I give you the story to show that what this evil king said. He said, this woman is bothering me. I mean, she's coming at me. And because she's coming at me, um, he said, uh, 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 you know, even though I don't fear God or man, yet because this widow troubles me, I will avenge her at least by her continual coming, he's going to wear me down. And so uh, Jesus says, and shall not, and the Lord said, hear what the unjust uh, judge saith, and read to you. Uh, and then he says, and shall not God avenge his own elect, which cry day and night unto him. And so this, uh, um, these Christians that are praying before God, and I've mentioned to you that uh, it tells us that we're praying to him uh, uh, continually, he says, because he inclines his ears to me. And so we know that he inclines his ears unto us. We are going to pray continually. And First Thessalonians puts it this way, pray without ceasing. Um, with all manner, all prayer and, and petition, pray at all times in the Spirit. And with this in view, be one that alert with all perseverance and petition for all the saints. Ephesians 6, 18 tells us, continue praying. Why? Because our Father is listening according to uh, Psalms uh, 1, uh, um, 16 that I just read to you guys. Uh, so this Bible is really a fascinating uh, tool that has been placed here so that you and I can see what our Father has to do on our behalf. And so it tells us here in this story that God is going to do something to those that harass us. The, um, the criteria by which we, we can do that is that we have to stay praying. And as we see the result that the Father says, uh, He will avenge you. And He knows those people's lives. He knows what uh, they're uh, all about. He knows the intention of their heart. And um, he is a God about justice. Isaiah 61, 8, For I, Lord, love justice. I hate robbery in, in, in burnt offering, and I will faithfully give them their recompense and make an everlasting covenant with them. Another thing that I'm going to talk about some, at some point is recompense. But we, I just wanted to remind you about prayingness of the individual, and that the justice that God will bring for me, because he says, for I, the Lord, of justice. So uh, those that are troubling you, that are there harassing you, and um, just keep praying. That's all I got to say about that, praying, because the Bible tells us, for I, the Lord, love justice. And because he loves justice, he will handle it. The scripture tells us what our responsibility is, to be praying 
pray without ceasing in First Thessalonians 5:17, and it tells us in um, in First uh, Timothy 2:1, it says, First, all, all, first of all, then I urge supplication, prayer, intercession, thanksgiving to be made. So you and I just keep praying about that situation. Uh, keep praying on what uh, they are doing. It make it uh, known to God that they are constantly harassing you, and they are they are um, uh, you know turn their their plots against you. Uh, we know what he did to Haman. Let we know what the psalmist pray. Let them fall into the same pit that they have for me. And so I talked to you guys about those before. My mother would call it the dirty, dirty Harry prayers, and she taught us how to pray that way. But uh, the scripture tells us praying uh, at all times in the spirit with all prayer and supplication. So stay before God, stay before God, because it says, And shall not God avenge his own elect, which cry day and night unto him? So that is the criteria um, who cry day and night, who are praying continually uh, before God, as the scripture says. So there are benefits, guys, to you and I praying. Um, Psalms 88, he says, My eyes uh, have wasted away because of uh, uh, affliction. I have called upon you every day, O Lord. I have spread out hands to you. Hey, guys, keep praying because there's a God that is um, is listening. He will avenge you and I. Be gracious to me, O Lord, for to you I cry all day. Psalms 86, verses 3. So, um, and we know what that grace is about, and uh, we've talked about it, how important the revelation of this grace and uh, the divine influence upon the heart. And the Bible tells us that God is longs to be gracious to his people. And that graciousness is he will turn their hearts towards you to get your benefit, to bring what is desired from him on your behalf. Because he tells us in his word that the heart of the king, that every single man's heart is in the hands of our God to turn like a river ever, wherever he chooses. And so don't be afraid of them. God tells them, he says, don't be afraid of these people. He says, I got you. Um, and this is why I keep telling you guys, there's no God out there at, uh, in any religion that I know that uh, has us like God the Father. He says, he is the lawgiver. He is the righteous one. Um, he is the one uh, that is a judge. It tells us in Psalms 56. Um, it says, the, the heavens declare his righteousness. God himself is judge. Selah. He is the judge for everything. So you and I are simply required according to this lady. And I wanted to encourage that to you guys. I know it seems as if there's nothing happening. But I just want to let you know. And shall not God avenge his own elect, that is you, which cry day and night unto him, though he bears long uh, with them, tell you that he will avenge them speedily. And when it comes, it'll come on them, man, and you will be, the Bible always says, so stand still and see the glory of the Lord and see his work being done on your behalf. Don't worry about these people. Don't worry about those that are at your job. Don't worry about those corrupt that are doing all those things to you. The Bible says stay in prayer. And um, uh, the criteria we've told about it, and I showed you in the beginning of Luke, is that that woman kept coming. That woman coming at that king. She kept coming at him. And he looked and he says, man, we got to do some. I got to do something because this woman is going to harass me to the point where, um, you know, if I don't do something, he's just still going to keep coming. And this is a widow, and uh, this widow uh, just gives us an example of someone who's just tenacious, and she keeps coming. And because of that tenacity that is within her, it caused this king. And uh, he said, for he would not for after a while. And that's what we see here, that this God that we are serving, he says, uh, he bears, though he bears long them. And we see the king. This, and he would not for a while. So for a while, he wouldn't give this woman what she was asking for. But afterwards, he said with him, himself, though I fear not God nor regard men, yet this widow troubled me. And so we know that she is kept coming at him, reminding him of what? The injustice. And he kept, she kept reminding him of the injustice that was done against her. And he says, 
I will avenge her. Why, at least by her continual coming, he wears me. So uh, just keep coming before God. And uh, it tells us that, and he would not for a while, but afterwards, he said within himself. And so God was us. But afterwards, he says he long, um, and though he bears long with them, afterwards, he says, I uh, tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Keep praying for those people. Keep praying for them. God is going to show up because he's a just God who loves uh, justice. And it tells us so in the scripture. He loves justice. And he says in Psalm 75, 7, God is the judge. He puts down one and he exalts another. And those that are coming to you, he says, I will avenge them. I will uh, avenge them speedily. Um, just keep, keep humble before God and pray. I pray continually until you get your God of justice to stand up and take um, justice and avenge you in your situation. The Bible says the just shall live by faith. We walk by faith, not by sight.